Hi, I'm a dummy on a pulley and someone's here to rescue me. This is a protraction and this is a loop. And if I drop it, I have a drop loop giving myself mechanical advantage if this side is fixed so I can haul up a victim in a rescue load. What happens if you put a protraction also on this side? Micah likes this double drop loop technique and he is certified in everything. He's an IFMGA guide, he is Sprat level three a couple times, and he is a confined space expert. And most importantly, a nerd. You can pull either side or both together to get them up through the space. And we are going to verify the mechanical advantage and then brake test these things to see how it actually works. And we have Brent who is certified in entertainment. So Brent's down here with me to help get me through this spot. Wow, holy moly, holy moly. I am getting rescued quickly. Okay, slow down, boys. <laughs> and I'm there. It's the only time we've ever had anybody say that you should slow down in the space. Because did you just feel when we both pulled? Yeah. It's like, hold it, and you're like, and confined space is very slow and methodical. Yeah. It's the first time it's like, whoa, whoa, we're going way too fast. Which is kind of cool. So what are you doing? Well, if we want to put you back down, I've redirected through a friction lowering device. In this case, a well-tested Neox. And <laughs> I'm going to sit down a little bit and unlock this microtraction so the teeth are not out of the way. And so this side is on this device. It's yeah. Half the weight of the load. And then I'm, yeah, it's half. And I'm moving half as far, right? While he lowers me. You're, you're only seeing half the weight on there. If you're worried about a heavier rescue load, you could anchor that device to something and, and deal with that. In a confined space, the whole point of it is you're not seeing two person load through that. You're usually hauling somebody through that confined space if you're a single person. So you don't really ever see a true, a true rescue load on that. Pull them together. It's a one-to-one. -one. Is it a one-to-one? -one? It is. It's a one-to-one -one -one with you and I pulling on the same side. On the same side? No, we're pulling on opposite sides. So I'm, I'm still only seeing half his weight. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. But it's a one-to-one. Now one. we're getting somewhere. Now it's but he's coming one -one. up in a one-to-one. -one. What are you pulling? One we thought it was so away. simple, it wasn't worth testing. How much force is on me, and how much force is on this? American units, and all right, Jesus old proof. Freedom <laughs> units, because we're the only country that's free of pride. You need to sit down, I need to You need to sit down. <laughs> Let's focus on my weight and that top thing before you start pulling. Just pull me up, man. <laughs> Don't Man. add peak forward. Yep, I'm 160 pounds still. Wow, <laughs> what does the anchor say? Probably half, right? Anchor sees 76 pounds. Wow, that's crazy. It's half of my weight with two protractions. Wow, I'm so glad we had three line scales to learn that. So it's, uh, that's not gonna change. Nope. So now how much input force do you have to put in to get me to move up now? 80? 80, because it takes half, it's a two to one. That kind of makes sense. That makes too much sense, so much sense. Half your weight to get it up there. Wow, You're we did not there. need to go through all this work to demonstrate this. Okay, no. so the next theory no. is now, if we're pulling on both sides of the pro track, Ooh. and we're gonna see, we're gonna be pulling at the same time, is it a true one to one, or does yeah. it still say it a two to one, and it's just going really, really so, fast. One, two, three. That's it. Don't drop me. <laughs> it's a Neox. I can't drop you. <laughs> Shit. It's a busted Neox. I'll fix that rope. <laughs> you want that to not move. Not, not move. That's okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go for ready. it, boys. One, two, three. Ooh. And it's still Dude, 80 pounds. Are you ready? Yep. One, two, three. Oh, wow, how this such this is basic math. This is math A. <laughs> so what we learned is it's, that it is truly a drop to it's a drop loop two to one. It doesn't change when you're pulling both sides at the same time. You know what's really dumb? That I was the dummy when I have a dummy. Now let's find out when that system breaks. May 31st is our hundredth newsletter where we put about every Saturday never missing a Saturday, and they're full of value. At the bottom of that email, you can enter to win a big giveaway. I am going to tell people very soon what that is. Make sure you get those emails. So this is the pulley. This is where your victim or load would be, which is the drop loop, which gives it a two to one mechanical advantage. So in theory, 
they should be seeing half the load on each one of these. So when people say, well, there's a tooth device and you're gonna desheath at four kilonewtons to six, our theory is we're gonna see way more off of these because it's seeing half the load. And then we just have it off to a rigging plate. So this is gonna see 100% of the load and this is going to see 100% of the load. And we've got a new way to measure that. So no, you, I don't think that. I think it's going to be four. On a well, single strand, what do they desheath that? Four uh, like every other two. No, two I device. think it's going to be higher. I think the well, fours with the smoke. I think this will be higher. I think it's going to be, device. everybody, when they say it's desheathing, it's at So what nine. rope is this for context for everyone? This is a 9.5. It's a Sterling 9.5 uh, tactical. Context doesn't <laughs> matter because the bigger the rope, which is going to be another one we talk about. <laughs> Smaller the rope to the bigger the rope, does it desheath faster? <laughs> And oh, I shit. think my theory is that it's not going to. So smaller rope is actually desheath uh, less than a bigger rope of desheath, which will kind of... You got it. something stuck in your throat? Uh, no, no. I'm not a betting man. I like to go <laughs> off of facts and science. Micah Rush, would you please read the label on this rope? <laughs> Sorry, this is an 8 mil. It's a sterling Thank 8 mil. Thank you, sir. Mil. You can stop talking. Okay. And go back to your this seat. is the 8 mil. So 9.95. Okay. My bad. So yeah, it's going to de-sheet the last even. It'll go higher. And you're really confident. What's it going to break? That What's the What is the load cell going to see? Four plus four, or eight plus eight? Uh, I'm going to round up a little bit and say ten. Okay. Five. You're going to stick to sixteen? Um, I think these prices right in me right now. Yeah, I'm still going to say sixteen. It's going to be a little bit lower than that, but who cares? Okay, I'm going to say one kilonewton because this is the price is right. What's our, oh, oh, oh 12. Kind of makes sense, right? So if we're saying- Everything does in hindsight. Does in hindsight, right? So we're all guessing. But if uh, our tech notice and what we're saying is desheathing at six to eight kilonewtons or four to eight kilonewtons, this saw uh, half the load. So desheath at six, what would that be? 6.15, six six. let's call yeah. it. Um, it desheathed it, so six kilonewton load. What did that do to our pulley? Does that still feel function super functional enough? The pulley is fine. This yeah. this is not affected at all. Do you ever need to put more than twelve k in on uh, your your victim? I hope we don't put more than twelve k in on our victim. <laughs> or they're we, stuck. We have a problem. And you're still pulling. You're still pulling. Yeah. <laughs> and most of our teams are using a little bit bigger than eight mil rope. Really? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah. Can we just redo this with a nine five? Yeah, I mean, just the because people I don't like my numbers, it didn't. It, it was I wasn't right. So, so you, I'm just gonna yeah. go until I'm right. Isn't that the way the world works? <laughs> that's how YouTube science works. That's how YouTube. Works. Wait, yeah. Yeah. This is the rope we are now using, and it is a nine five. That rope will desheath at a higher number than what that eight did. That's what interesting. I interesting. That's my prediction. I think we should run down this rabbit hole with. I think the smaller the rope the higher the desheathing will be and the bigger the rope it's going to desheath sooner i have a I button think, that would just end this conversation <laughs> right now I'm thinking like a like a like an like an american that bigger is better i think most people think that yeah. safety squints <laughs> my school is that number bigger than 12 uh, it looks <laughs> bigger than 12. some things you have to realize girth does matter the bigger rope did was a little bit stronger volume 15 kilonewton so well it's theory, the number you were trying to get all along 16. 16 it was 16 when i thought it was nine when i thought it was nine five 16 which means you won the prices close, right we want prices right which means both protracts were seeing close to eight kilonewtons of force is what we thought that's what i really tell everybody is these are gonna desheath at four to six kilonewtons when we know that's not true, they desheath it a lot higher. That's like worst case scenario. I feel like if you saw this start to desheath and you kept pulling, I think we should go back to team dynamics <laughs> and uh, maybe some basic concepts before we start doing this to a rope. If you pull and the patient is stuck and you pull this tail mm. as hard as you can, it has nothing to do with the teeth. It has everything to do with that thing that holds that wheel in there. I would agree with that. You have the fixed anchor, goes down to the patient, comes back up to the micro traction, and you have too many people pulling on the tail while the litter is stuck or something. Is that going to desheath the rope? No, come to find out, because you're not 
It has nothing to do with the teeth. The teeth are not engaging unless you were to pull on the patient, which would be, you're doing something wrong. So we also did on a micro traction and it also exploded the thing and the pulley I went off shit off my everywhere. wall. Bonus fact of the day, um, the Petzl Pro Track, the reason it has this weird design, I learned from the guy who designed this when I was working with him, is it has this weird cut in it. And it's for when you're loading it on it, if you had somebody hanging here on a tight line and you're breaking into a, some call it a pitch head haul or breaking into a tight line, once you load this device onto the, the high line, if it was tensioned, I'll push it down here. Uh, before we would get into it, we'd use our body weight or we use some sort of mechanical advantage to get into it. If you put the carabiner here, the carabiner is gonna follow the flow of it. So when I break into it, it breaks into the tight line. And that's after, but this is connected to either the same thing or a different thing? Or a different anchor. Yeah, you want to connect to the anchor. And what I'm doing is I'm breaking in, creating slack so I can get a mechanical advantage here. And start, start hauling falling. up. And so it's really cool where this just follows and it breaks into it and flows into it and pulls it down into the system. So now it is. So this is the weird design you see in there.